in Paris in December 2015, a truly historic achievement was made, namely the Paris Climate Agreement was uh, finally reached after many years of discussion. In fact, it was exactly 50 years after the first report to the United States President Lyndon B. Johnson by his scientific advisory panel warned of the impending global warming due to carbon dioxide. And it took 50 years of discussion by the international community to finally come to an agreement to confront this imminent threat. This was very late in the game, so it's a race against the clock now to stop global warming in time. The agreement in Paris that was reached was actually, in my perception, a very good one in that it says we need to limit warming well below two degrees with an aspiration to limit it to 1.5 degrees. I think that is very good because in my view, two degrees is not good enough. And I've said that often in uh, previous years in public because of the massive risks that come already with a warming of two degrees. After all, we are already experiencing some very harmful effects of global warming now after about one degree of warming that we have experienced thus far. That includes an increased incidence of heat records, of droughts. We observe an uh, accelerating sea level rise. We have uh, had about 20 centimeters of global sea level rise in the 20th century, which is far more than in any of the previous 3000 years. So where did this limit of two degrees originally come from? Actually, it has a very long history. The first book that appeared describing the need to limit global warming to two degrees was one by Krauss and colleagues in the late 1980s. This idea of limiting warming to a maximum of two degrees was then uh, promoted strongly in a report by the German Advisory Council on Global Change, which is a panel of scientists appointed by the German government to advise on global change issues. I have served on uh, this panel myself for eight years, but not at the early uh, time in the 90s when it first uh, wrote a report arguing that we should limit warming to a maximum of two degrees to stay within the Holocene mode of uh, operation of the climate system, which is the kind of range of climates that human civilization has experienced in the past and has been able to thrive in. Now, that two degrees limit then soon after in the mid 90s became the official policy of the German government. It became the official adopted policy of the European Union and was uh, confirmed as such several times in the following years until uh, after many further discussions for many years, finally in 2010, it became the official limit of uh, all, practically all nations uh, on earth who work together in the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Now, what are the reasons for limiting warming to a maximum of two degrees or perhaps uh, or better 1.5 degrees. There are some very strong reasons uh, for this and they have been debated many, many times. There have been several high level international conferences debating the limit that we need to set on global warming. Uh, there was one called by Tony Blair in Britain, for example. There was the Copenhagen Science Conference that was ahead of the Copenhagen Climate uh, Summit in 2009. There have been numerous reports written about uh, a two degree target and many, many scientific papers, I would say thousands of scientific papers arguing the evidence, uh, showing the evidence what would happen if we go beyond two degrees. And last not least, the reports by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, although they don't 
advocate for any particular limit because it's outside the, the frame of reference of the IPCC. They have compiled a lot of evidence for what happens when we go beyond uh, those two degrees, which I think make a very compelling case for staying well below the two degree level. That, of course, has now been agreed in Paris by 195 nations. Almost every nation on Earth uh, has signed on to this, knowing very well the implications, namely that this means getting out of fossil emissions completely uh, well before the end of the century. That is explicitly stated in the Paris Agreement. So the implications are really very momentous. I mean, it is a, a massive transformation of our entire energy economy, yet all nations, including those uh, against whose immediate interests this is, like nations selling fossil fuels like Saudi Arabia, they have all signed on to this because it is so compelling. Uh, the evidence that we run a major threat to human civilization if we go beyond these two degrees is simply overwhelming. One key reason to stay below two degrees is the risk of crossing so-called uh, critical thresholds for tipping points in the planetary system. And those are points beyond which we set self-sustaining dynamics in motion, vicious circles that then run kind of out of our control. And that involves, for example, as, as possibilities, as risks, the destabilization of the West Antarctic ice sheet, leading to three meters of global sea level rise, the destabilization of the Greenland ice sheet, leading to another seven meters of global sea level rise, the loss of most of the coral reefs on our planet, uh, the loss of the Arctic sea ice cover, uh, a pot potential collapse of the Gulf Stream system and a number of other tipping elements in the climate system that could be destabilized or fundamentally changed in irreversible and detrimental ways. And uh, as this diagram here illustrates, we don't know exactly where these critical thresholds, these tipping points in the climate system are. There is substantial uncertainty about exactly where they are because that is typical for highly nonlinear phenomena that it is very difficult to pin them down in a quantitative way. And so we have uncertainty ranges for these individual tipping points where, which are indicated by these vertical bars going from uh, white through yellow, orange to red. These colors signify an increasing risk of having passed that point of no return, that critical threshold. And uh, as you can see in the group of five tipping elements on the left here, there are several where we already run the risk of crossing these tipping points within the warming range defined by the Paris Agreement between 1.5 and 2 degrees of global warming. That indicates that even implementing the Paris Agreement in full and reaching those goals doesn't mean a risk-free climate change, we're still running substantial risks. Uh, for example, even below two degrees, we are likely to lose most of the coral reefs on this planet, which, which is a depressing thought. But we have left it so long that basically we can't do any better than 1.5 degrees anymore. So anything that would have been agreed below that would have simply not been feasible anymore at this point so late in the game after having spent so many decades debating global warming. 